Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Abrutinib was recently approved for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia in addition to its CLL approvals. This was quite a milestone as no other drug had previously been approved for Waldenstrom's, which has historically been hard to study as it's a fairly rare disease. The approval was based on a phase two study in which very significant clinical benefit was seen with marked improvement in hemoglobin as well as marked improvement in IgM levels, often quite rapidly. Interestingly, the improvement in hemoglobin and IgM to some extent outpaced the rate of improvement in bone marrow disease, but patients are doing very well and feeling better and staying on drug with ongoing improvement in these parameters. Ibrutinib represents a tremendous step forward in the treatment of patients with Waldenstrom's. Approximately 90% of patients with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia will respond to ibrutinib therapy. In those patients who don't respond, we have found that almost all of them possess a mutation in the CXCR4 protein in their Waldenstrom cells. And so it's certainly nice to have an ability to identify ahead of time who are those patients that are going to respond and who are those that are not going to respond. What I think is actually very intriguing about treatment of patients with ibrutinib, treatment of Waldenstrom's patients with ibrutinib, is that we see the IgM drop very dramatically, very quickly. And it sort of is very unexpected given, upon, given what we would expect to be the normal kinetics of IgM secretion. What we do see in Waldenstrom's patients receiving treatment with ibrutinib is the IgM jump back up should they need to come off of the ibrutinib for any period of time. And this has actually been seen even far out in therapy. So patients who have been on therapy for over two years, we still see that occur. One of the important questions is whether or not this is just the ibrutinib impairing IgM synthesis, sort of giving us a false rate of response or not. And we see a very dramatic improvement in thrombocytopenia and anemia in our patients receiving ibrutinib. And so there's clear a improvement in hematopoiesis and a clearing of the marrow and a reduction in the splenomegaly and lymphadenopathy in these patients receiving ibrutinib. But for some reason, the IgM seems to be very different in its response characteristics. So for Waldenstrom's patients on ibrutinib, it looks like the ibrutinib will need to be lifelong therapy unless we can identify other agents to combine it with that may actually change that. So I do use rituximab and ofatumumab in combination with ibrutinib in some of my patients. And I'm certainly looking forward to studying a lot of the immune checkpoint inhibitors in combination with ibrutinib to see if we can actually generate deeper responses and responses that will be lasting even without the ibrutinib needing to be continued.